Let's look at another Green's Theorem example. So we're going to evaluate line integral for work, but using Green's Theorem, not an actual line integral, do the calculation. And here is what the given information is. The vector field in question is defined by negative y comma 2xy. So those are the two components of the vector. And the c, the curve, or the, the path for this line integral, is the boundary of x squared plus y squared equals 9, a circle, radius 3. So visually speaking, there's my two-dimensional region of integration, y and x, radius 3, counterclockwise around the closed or connected path. If this is a conservative vector field, we expect the work done to be zero. But if it's not a conservative vector field, that's really where Green's theorem shows itself. So according to Green's theorem, that work calculation will be n with respect to x minus m with respect to y. So we have to set up our double integral. And given that we have the vector field handy, this would be a fairly easy calculation. Um, m is equal to negative y, and its x derivative is, uh, or y derivative is gonna be pretty easy n is 2xy, so this is going to become double integral, n with respect to x is 2y minus m with respect to y is negative 1, so that makes this actually plus 1. Now, should we set it up dy dx? Is there any reason to change it to dx dy? Well, that's what I was thinking also. There's a circle, a completely closed in circle. Why not convert to polar? Why not convert it to polar? Polar would serve us pretty nicely this algebra doesn't look too threatening. So let me see if I can't uh, create a little bit of space here to consider polar. Um, you know what, while I've got a little bit of room on this paper, let's just do a couple of chores here, tasks. By that circle, the theta boundary we're gonna choose is from zero to two pi and R is a constant, zero to three, all the way around. So this shouldn't be terrible to set up. I don't know that I have room to evaluate it if I stay here, so I'm gonna to go to another piece of paper. All right, so I have got here circle of radius three, and my integral for work is gonna be two y plus one dA, okay, that's what we had. And we know that theta is zero to two pi, and r is zero to three. All right, zero to two pi, zero to three, and dA becomes r dr d theta. Well, 
Well, you can't leave y. It's not polar. y is equivalent to r times sine of theta. Now we're converted. This is what we're about to evaluate. Let me do one more step. 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 3 r times r is 2r squared sine theta plus 1 times r is r. Now, you have a pause button. Pause, work ahead. Then, see if the rest of this video matches your work. Um, if you're regularly working out integrations like we have in the last couple of units, um, I would definitely say work ahead of me and then watch the rest to see if it played out correctly. If you're rusty, well, here we go. 0 to 2 pi, r is the variable. I get 2r to the third over 3 times sine of theta plus r to the second over 2. And r goes from 0 to 3. Three Q twenty seven nine eighteen. Okay, so this is going to become zero to two pi eighteen sine theta plus nine halves. All right, and now theta is a variable, and we'll integrate. The integral of sine is negative cosine. The integral of 9 halves is 9 halves theta. And theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. All right. I'm going to write out a little bit more than normal here. Negative 18 cosine 2 pi plus 9 halves times 2 pi minus negative 18 cosine 0 plus 0. The cosine of 2 pi is equal to the cosine of, whoops, that's supposed to say 0. Yeah, let's put a red pen on it. I marked it wrong. I got a mistake there. So zero. But the cosine of 2 pi and the cosine of 0 are equal. These two terms will add up to 0. That term is 0. I end up here with 9 pi. 2 is reduce. The network of traveling around a circle of radius 3 with that vector field acting on it. There you go. Don't forget we have polar.